In 2020, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 6 Tommy Mackinnon Edition celebrates its 20th anniversary. In that time, it's become a stone-cold modern classic. That seemed like reason enough to wake up before sunrise, find some deserted roads and go for a blast. But before that, a history lesson. During the second half of the 1990s, Mitsubishi bossed the World Rally Championship. It won the manufacturer's title in 1998 and the driver's title in 96, 97, 98 and 1999. There were two reasons for that, the Lancer Evolution, better known simply as the Evo, and this guy, Tommy Mackinnon. The Finnish driver won all four of his WRC titles aboard Group A Mitsubishi Evos, starting with the Evo 3 in 96. The last of them came in 1999 in the Evo 6, maybe the most iconic Evo of them all. In recognition of Mackinnon's extraordinary success in the WRC, Mitsubishi released the limited run Evo 6 and named it after him. It arrived in the year 2000 and two and a half thousand were built. Nowadays, the Evo 6 TME is about as sought after as Evos get. You wouldn't dream of driving enthusiastically on these narrow little lanes in a McLaren or in a Ferrari. They'd be too stiff, they'd be too low, scraping their belly, because these roads are super narrow. They're so bumpy. They're full of dips and compressions. These roads are more or less tarmac rally stages and this car well it's more or less a tarmac rally car isn't it it loves them it feels so narrow so compact even on these tiny little roads because it is it's got plenty of ground clearance it's got supple fluid suspension so it doesn't bounce along and it never scrapes its underside into the tarmac it's amazing how competent this Evo is along these tiny roads. Of course, when a car is this good on narrow roads, it tends to be even better on wider ones. Now we have a bit more room to play. Now we can start using this car's performance. And it's got a lot of it. <laughs> OK, so what have we got? Really strong performance. This engine, it's not got bundles of power, 280 horsepower but it does feel strong. We like to think that turbochargers, that technology has come such a long way in the last couple of decades, but drive this thing and the turbocharging just feels so up to date. Actually, peak power is at six and a half thousand RPM, so that's where you tend to shift up. But if you need to, you can hold on all the way beyond 7,200. And that, in a 20-year-old turbo engine, that's insane. It's a really short, quick gear shift action. It's tight, it's mechanical, it's quite heavy actually. But that's great, when you really start rowing the gears, it feels fantastic. Clutch pedal, it's quite heavy, but again, it's just really well matched to the gear shift. These Recaro seats, these massive bolsters, so supportive, they just clamp you in position. And you need those bolsters, you need to be supported because the way this thing holds on around corners, whew, it's incredible. It's got so much grip, such a good front end. Just chuck it into a corner and it bites. One of the things I love about this car is that it's not got really short suspension travel and really stiff springs. It's rangy, so the wheels can do this over the shape of the road. That means the tyres are pressed into the tarmac all the time where they generate tons of grip and it means the body is always kept well controlled. No wonder, no wonder these things used to murder early naughty supercars on mountain roads. It's so fast. Initially the steering feels a bit springy, a bit rubbery. It's not really telling you a great deal. So you have to learn to trust the front end, learn how much grip there is. Because there's always loads. I love that there's a bit of lean in the body. It's not just flat the whole time. That lets you feel the grip. I love how composed it feels. I love how the car deals with the bumps in the road. It soaks them up like a rally car. 
It doesn't try and pummel the road into submission. And when the road flows like this one is, the car feels magnificent. It's up on its tiptoes, so well poised. This would give a modern supercar run for its money on this road. It's just so competent. The chassis works beautifully. <laughs> oh, through there. It feels magical through there. Of course, it's got so much traction as well with that four-wheel drive system. You never get any wheel spin. On a really dry, warm road like this one, you're not really that aware of the active yaw control, that diff in the rear axle, shuffling power around. In the wet, when you've got the car moving around a little bit more, you'd be much more conscious of where the torque is going across that rear axle. In the dry, the car's just so planted. Put your foot down and it just pings out of the corner. It's actually on the way into a bend, certainly on a dry road, where you've got more adjustability. Turn in with the weight over the front of the car and the rear end does start to scoot around. And that's when you just need a little bit of corrective lock just to bring it back in line. It's so much fun. The Tommy Mackinac edition is a sort of evolution of the Evolution 6. That's why this car is sometimes called the Evo 6.5. Now, apart from these rally style graphics, the Tommy Mackin edition also got air intakes where the normal Evo 6 has a couple of big fog lights. One of the things I love about the TME is that wherever you look, you see brand name component suppliers, all with proper motorsport heritage. NK wheels, Brembo brakes, Recaro seats, the Momo steering wheel, it all adds up to an impression of quality. Those brand names fill you with confidence. Nothing here has been done by half. The engine is a four-cylinder, two-litre turbo, as you'd expect for this car. 280 horsepower, 275 pounds-foot of torque. But for the Tommy Mackin edition, Mitsubishi fitted the turbo with a lightweight titanium turbine wheel. That's what gives it that very snappy throttle response, very little lag, and you really feel that out on the road. Mitsubishi quoted a 0-60 time of 4.5 seconds and 150 miles an hour flat out. For a four-door saloon, this car is pretty light, 1,365 kilograms. And compared to other Evo 6s, the Tommy Mackin Edition also sits slightly closer to the road. What you can't see is the four-wheel drive system with active yaw control. This was the height of technology in 2000. In fact, it's still clever today. It's essentially an electronically controlled limited slip differential in the rear axle. Active yaw control uses sensors all over the car, one on each wheel, throttle position sensor, steering wheel sensor, g-force sensor and so on, to determine if the car is understeering or oversteering and then active yaw control splits the torque between the rear wheels accordingly and that is what makes this car so agile and so responsive on the road. The cabin is a mix of the very ordinary, like these standard Lancer ventilation controls, and the very cool, such as the Recaro seats. So there is some cool stuff in here, but basically the interior is standard Mitsubishi Lancer, and it's not sexy stuff. I mean, look at all this cheap, scratchy black plastic here, the switch gear. Well, it all works, but it's not exactly premium market stuff, is it? I think all of that was one of the reasons why when the European hot hatches became really good, think Mark V Golf GTI, the Evos and the Subaru Impreza's, they started to have a really tough time of it because, well, you didn't have to have a mini cab style interior if you wanted a sporty car. Anyway, apart from all that stuff, I also want to show you this button here. It's for the intercooler water spray that squirts water onto the intercooler, reducing engine intake temperatures and that means that even when the engine is really hot it doesn't lose performance. You will never notice the effect of that on the road but it's a proper motorsport bit of hardware. It's there probably to homologate the water spray for the rally car and that is just cool. 
Bring all of those things together and you get one of the most rewarding driving experiences of the past two decades. This car, like the guy it's named after, is a proper legend. I can think of few better reasons to set my alarm for 4 a.m. Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the Piston Heads YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up.